it should take on importance generally. I've, I've made that clear in my time here that I do I do value the cups and I think they are important. On the other hand, it is fair to say that we are going to have to use players to get them fit and and fit for task. And the players that have come in and not have spent as many uh, uh, not had as many minutes, sorry, um, game time wise. So we are going to obviously play some players, but they will certainly be putting out a team that I believe can win. What are you hoping to see on Tuesday to take into into Saturday? Yes, uh, just just good performances. You know, so people laying down markers. If you, if they haven't been playing, then go and lay down a marker and make sure that you you're playing on, on Saturday. Is that a message to the players? Do you get a chance? No, it's it's a message generally. I say every day's every day's a chance to show us what you can do, whether it's training, whether it's games. Obviously, games are more relevant because it's a, a more visually measurable part of what we do. Yeah, but even in training, players players can learn uh, lay down markers where you go. You know, and they keep that high level consistency where you think they're pushing. So we want players to do that every day. But of course, when games come around. Show us what you can do. That's what we want, especially the new players, because they've only had a limited time with us. Thanks, Joe. So how important is it for your strikers to start scoring goals? Like yeah, it's, it's another strange thing. It's like, um, you know, it's a fair question. I don't mind it, but it's like, it's sort of like we, we don't offer them to not score goals, you know. You know, we, we, we're trying to get them to score goals. So it's like, you know, people say, well, how, what are you going to do about it? And uh, Arsene Wenger used to say this. I know it's a bit of a dirty word here. But Arsene Wenger used to say this. He used to say, Shawnee said, your job is to look after the back, the middle and the sides of the pitch. The chairman looks after the box. Quite profound words. And if you think of it in its simplicity, we all know what he means. And that's a challenge. If it was that easy, he would have been developing centre forwards left, right and centre. But he was generally buying them. You know, if you look across the... Man City are a great example, and I've used this before in the sense that, arguably, I don't know every detail, they probably can scout the whole globe for the best youngsters in the world. But how many come through their ranks and become centre forwards? or become ones that are Man City legends, let's say. Think of it. If it was that easy, we'd all be developing strikers, and then they'd all be brilliant. So when we say, how are you going to make them all clinical? I go, well, we're just going to keep working and keep finding different ways. Maybe their their best kind of way they can score goals and try and get them in an area and give them the ammunition to score their best goals. But generally speaking, it's always the toughest side. The clinical edge in football, particularly at this level, is always the thing that managers are looking out for. Talking, it makes me feel like if you get the chance, and you said you know you said you have no money, but if you could get a good only strike, and there's loads of them around. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> you know, everyone presupposes why aren't you getting a striker, and you go, well, go and find me one, and we'll get them in. Especially one for not a lot of money. All the best for that. That is a task. Trust me, I've been doing it for years. No, not just striker. You want clinic, clinical players. I mean, I think Tottenham, the one thing they've got, I know people question their, their play in the defensive side of it, but they've got clinical players everywhere. You can see that. You know, they've got players who can score a goal or want to score a goal from all different positions, all different areas of the pitch. Um, that, that's not an easy situation. And they scout them players and spend all that money for that reason. Do you think Neil Mopay, you could reintroduce him into the fold if, uh, say, He's had a real tough run at uh, Everton Football Club. They know that. Um, he knows that. So we'll have to wait and see if something new comes for him or if he can stay here and, and see what he can give us. But, you know, he's, he's had a tough run at Everton Football Club. Paddy. <laughs> Harrison Armstrong today. What have you made of his progress? Yeah, really good. I mean, a young player who we felt has been worth fast-tracking with us during pre-season. Um, he's been mainly training with us. He played in the under-21s, but just to keep his game tally up. And... You know, look, on a game like that, when it's got away from you, it's nice to just give him a feel of it. You know, it's really early in his career, but to get around it, feel with it, uh, the feel of it, on the pitch, to travel with the team. You know, these are all influences that, excuse me, all influences that will rub off on him. Um, but we believe in what he's doing at a very young age, Roman as well. And, you know, there's other players, but we're trying to introduce them to give them at least a feel and sort of fast track their learning when we think they're ready. And we think he is ready to at least be around what we're doing. I do. Yes. Yes. Very, very high chance. But as long as injury, you know, no, no problems, no injuries, I think. Any further questions before we wrap up? No. Okay. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you.